Look, the biggest update each year has always been the next iOS update. And this year being a new year has no exception. If you're thinking of buying a device, trust me, you don't want to buy a device that doesn't support iOS 15. And this is why. Now, when a new update comes out, it always makes it easy to tell the difference between a device that has the latest operating system and one that does not have the latest operating system. For example, what I mean like this year, we saw how iOS 14 changed the look of the iPhone by adding widgets. So people always opt for devices that support the latest operating system. And this year, we've quite a number of reports suggesting that some devices that support iOS 14 are going to be dropped for example the iphone 6s is going to be dropped when it comes to ios 15 so you don't want to be getting this and another device that is going to be dropped is the se first generation that device also supports ios 14 currently but when it comes to ios 15 that is going to be released this year that iphone se is going to be dropped now at the moment i actually don't have that device but it's not one that you'd want to buy and if you're thinking about buying a device and you are ios conscious and you you always want to get a phone that has the latest uh, features and new updates so devices that are going to support ios 15 range from the iphone 7 and newer so iphone 7 will support ios 15 and then of course iphone 8 the iphone x and then the iphone xr xs the iphone 11 of course the iphone 12 and since ios 15 typically comes out slightly before the release of the new iphones that means that the new iphone 13 or the iphone 12 s devices whichever apple decides to call it will support ios 15 when it comes out so now if you are thinking of buying a used device i would typically stay away from the iphone 7 because it will probably be supported for like a year only and then be dropped and the same could also be said when it comes to the iphone 8 so you don't want to be buying the iphone 7 mostly but if your budget you know only allows you the iphone 8 then perhaps you can get it by buying the iphone 8 or newer but i would typically you know choose the iphone x because it gives you like a year or two years of leverage to play with before you know your device is dropped from the latest update so those are the device that are this time are being said to support the latest ios update this year ios 15 so the iphone 7 and newer then when it comes to when we could possibly see see the release of ios 15 so usually apple makes the announcement of the next wwdc event in the second quarter so somewhere you know in the second quarter of the year that's when we are going to see that and date being announced and usually the date takes place mid this year so it's going to be somewhere in june could be the second or third week of june and this year i don't think it's going to be different from last year it's typically going to be like an online event and invitations are going to be sent out in the second quarter once the date has been confirmed and just like any other ios update the release is going to go through quite a number of betas so first developer beta testers will get the software first and then after like two or three weeks or sometimes even after a month public beta testers will get the first beta of ios 15 just like how history has always been in the past so that's how this software is going to be rolled out some something like that and then also when it comes to some changes that we want to see when it comes to ios 15 these are features that you know people ask me about are we going to see always on display when it comes to ios 15 and just in case you're wondering this is why i have this device here because this year we might actually see always on display when it comes to ios 15 so look how this samsung device always shows the time this is actually showing my local time and then this one is actually showing zimbabwean time in harare so it's information that i have there and it's always on i don't have to like flip up the device to see the time so none of the iphones even the iphone 12 have this and it's something that apple can easily integrate in their new ios update when it comes out it's something that i long for so just like look at the difference you know people want always on display if we really push for it and vote for it 
Apple might actually bring this back and then also something that we might see could be split view when it comes to some devices now this is something that I don't expect to come on the iPhone SE the 2020 SE since the first gen SE is going to be dropped so split view could be coming to the max or the plus iPhone devices the ones that have the bigger display just like this one also another feature that I would like to see when it comes to the bigger max or the plus iPhones is multitasking so at least if they were to provide it on the plus or the max devices like the XS max or the 11 plus or 12 plus that would be awesome currently i don't think the iphone se since it has such a small display and also the iphone 12 mini it has such a small display i doubt they would put more tasking on that because it will be sort of hard to have two applications running simultaneously side by side on such a small screen on a plus or a max device that is something that apple can do this is something that android devices have always had for a long time and also something else that could be integrated with the newer iphone devices when they come out is touch id so just like this device that you see here it has touch id here so if i touch there that's where the fingerprint scanner is and it also has face detection not face id but face detection so when it comes to ios 15 and the iphone 13 we could be seeing a device that has touch id and face id or face detection face id that we have on the iphone is always better than what we have on this android device so imagine an iphone that combines both touch id and face id that would be so convenient since 2021 doesn't seem so different when it comes to covid so ios 15 and the hardware being available for the newer iphone 13 devices it could be a possibility also something that we could be seeing with ios 15 when it comes to facetime could be screen sharing on facetime on the iphone so just like some applications allow you to already share your screen while doing a video call we could be seeing something like that when it comes to facetime with ios 15 that will be so convenient also something that we could see is widgets on the lock screen so i just have widgets here and this is my home screen and on the lock screen you can see that it's always plain and blank so it could be a possibility whereby apple plays around and tries to modify the widgets and also the ability to allow you to basically dynamically place applications where you want you can see that you know when it comes to ios 14 currently i can't place my application anywhere on the screen i can do that on this device but on ios 14 i can't and hopefully that is something that comes with ios 15 also with ios 15 we could actually be getting the ability to lock applications using face id so you see for example on this iphone when i open whatsapp it's locked with face id now this is for specific applications and it has a lot to do with hardware and software and also the developer of the app so with ios 15 if apple enforces that and allows it on a wider scale then this is something that we could be seeing across all devices that have face id and if the iphone 13 comes with face id and touch id then perhaps you can also lock your applications or your softwares with both face id or touch id that would be so convenient and also some sources seem to suggest that we could be seeing redesigned icons when it comes to ios 15 some people suggest something that looks like mac os or tv os integrated into ios widgets and also the icons that we have i'm not sure how i would feel about that having your phone look like the mac or your tv that's the ecosystem i guess that apple has and it's something that some sources seem to suggest at this time so those are the supported devices remember if you want to buy an iphone in 2020 a used iphone and you can't afford the newer ones try looking at least for an iphone x or newer you buy yourself some time and when the new ios 15 comes out you will actually be able to enjoy the new features and updates just like what happened with ios 14 you can see the adoption rate of ios 14 is actually over 80 percent so a lot of people have 
updated to this newer update and i believe when ios 15 comes out it's going to be similar so iphone x and newer is what i recommend and if you can't afford the iphone x at least minimum the last purchase that you would do that i would like to recommend is the iphone 8 by doing that you buy yourself some time and also you'll be able to enjoy the new features and changes that came with the update without having to compromise either on device speed and many many others so that's about it for me guys if you like this video please leave a like and if you haven't subscribed a sub will be great stay safe and i will see you in the next video very soon Peace.